Hello everyone, this is Chris and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, lately, I wrote something on one of the groups that I work on, and I'm going to go here right now and read it to you. And uh, I'm, uh, forgive me for not having that booted up right at the beginning, um, but I didn't know that my grace wanted me to talk about this until just now. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Going there. Uh, okay, that's not helping. And let's see. Um, let's try that. It's only when you're broadcasting live that things go too slow for you. Ah, here we go. Within Kundalini... We do not have corporeal free will against that which has bestowed free will. Okay, and another way to see the same thing. I'll scroll way down here, evidently. Yeah, I'll just have to come back up to the guy with the beard here. That 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 sound you're hearing is Mr. Crow. Uh, he's doing his thing. Um, all right, so... Uh, the other way to see this is only those who sleep have free will. Kundalini people have divine will. And that is something very different. Some of you will understand what I'm saying... Because, you know, you're just that far into your activation or your awakening. Especially those in, in the activation aspect of it, though. When you're being directed against eating a certain food or partaking of a certain substance, whatever it may be, it's not you that is making this choice. It's Kundalini making this choice for you. You no longer have the egotistical control uh, over your entire life anymore. Kundalini is in charge of that now, and it will release it will release you from things that you have enjoyed in your life, from activities you have enjoyed, from people that you have enjoyed from a job that you have enjoyed, from a relationship that you have enjoyed, it will release you from these things. And sometimes not with your permission. Sometimes it will give you a warning. Say, like, Kristen, you know, you're going to be released from this. And a feeling will come on. You won't hear it typically in words. You'll hear it as a feeling that will come on. It's like, okay, I'm going to be released from this job. Or I'm going to be released from this uh, relationship, or I'm going to be released from this situation, uh, and you just need to start detaching, preparing yourself for that releasement. Uh, for a sleeping person, they would say, no, I'm not going to be released from this, I want to do this, and, I'm, and they continue to do it. And for a lot of you within Kundalini, it's certainly at the beginning of the Kundalini, you know, you're, you're saying, no, <laughs> you're telling you know, the great mother goddess, you know, creator of the world and the universe, you're saying, no, <laughs> I, I'm not going to stop doing this. And she will take you and she will kindly help you understand that, yes, indeed, you are going to stop this. And yes, indeed, this is going to happen. And, and to your shock and dismay, you know, it does happen. It does. She just changes the way you feel about certain scenarios. She changes that. You don't change that. The great mother, the, the, you know, the sacred feminine mother, Kundalini, changes this within you. And I know people don't like to hear it that way. You know, the people that are, that are really versed in science don't want to hear sacred mother, empress, goddess, whatever. You know, they're like, no, 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 that's just not scientific. <laughs> and it isn't. And I don't intend it to be scientific. But neither is it religious either, so just FYI on that. Uh, although, uh, 
you know the all the all the great religions have been started by the kundalini by people who had it or were being guided by it uh but yeah yeah uh, kundalini is the driving will that begins to take over a person as it as it blends itself into their personality sometimes that blend is sudden just like boom all of a sudden you know you're a completely different person you have completely different likes and dislikes it's just as if you've been possessed okay but for most of us it's it's a gradual thing gradual with different levels of speed okay so as you activate the kundalini and all of a sudden you're being guided not to eat this and guided to to uh, self-correct emotional explosiveness or to self-correct away from from drugs or any of these things um, her her the sacred feminine is is taking over and sacred feminine is 50 percent of kundalini grace 50 percent sacred male is the other 50 percent okay and sacred male assists uh sacred mother in doing this uh he does uh, and and if you start feeling really really hot that's his influence upon you. If you start feeling really, really cold for no reason, you know, it's not cold outside or inside, but it's cold inside your body, well, that's the sacred feminine as well. And so what I'm really driving at here is you begin to lose the choice of deciding egotistically what you will or will not do. And I'm going to suggest you surrender to that. You surrender to that. Now, this is different than being possessed. You know, possession, you usually hear words in your head or, you know, some sort of low vibrational thought pattern or condemnation of another person or of you, uh, you know, your, yourself. And this is not the Kundalini. She doesn't communicate that way. Entities do. You know, spirits or ghosts or call them whatever you want. They communicate that way. So you don't want to pay attention to those voices or those instructions that you hear, uh, like telepathically in your head, especially if they say, I am God, thou shalt do my will upon thee. That's just bullshit. Okay. Total fabrication, total manipulation of you. So never, 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 ever listen to those voices or those instructions with any level of seriousness. Okay, this is very important because uh, these are just parasitic entities that are using you to corrupt you and to take the blessings of grace away from you and therefore away from the planet and away from the people that surround you or, or that you come in contact with. So it's a, it's, a, it's a hurtful thing. Whereas Kundalini will come in and just begin to help you understand Okay. She will help you understand that you are no longer to be this way. You are no longer to act that way. You are no longer to eat this or drink that or, or have this relationship. And this, you know, the matters of the heart can be extremely difficult within the Kundalini. But she will soften. She will soften that blow. And at the same time, if you've already had the Kundalini, that can be an extremely harsh thing. And, uh, and I, I think I may have discussed that in other videos. I'll check. But, uh, you know, the emotional body is, is, as I said in another video today, is, is extremely powerful. And, you know, that, you know, that level of uh, renunciation, so to speak, can be very difficult for people. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it here. You know, when the Kundalini says this is not to happen, then it's not to happen no matter how much you're attracted to the person, no matter how much you love the person, it's not going to go. And if you try to force it, it won't go well for either one of you. So something to remember. Something to remember with that. And so once again, your will has being take, is being taken away from you, your choice. Uh, 
This is divine will. When Kundalini is, is directing you to eat, uh, you know, lettuce and cabbage and carrots and, and vegetables, when you don't usually do that, divine will is kicking in. Uh, if you're a vegetarian, when the Kundalini is saying you must eat that, that chicken or that, that, uh, that meat, whatever form it comes into, you know, and, and, you know, let's just say you're a culturally indoctrinated Indian, uh, citizen vegetarian. Whew, that's going to be a very hard thing. You know, all the ugliness comes to the surface. It's like, I don't want to eat that dead body. Whereas plants are just as dead as any corporeal thing, right? Plants are also bodies, but that's part of the programming. Um, I don't want to eat that dead mammalian body or fish body or bird body. Oh my God, it's it's a dead carcass. Why would I want to put that in myself, right? And they got to go through this whole thing. They got to go through this whole denial of the Kundalini. And she'll patiently watch that and then, you know, take away any any hunger for any food except for that meat that she wants you to eat. Okay, once again, this is divine will. Divine will. And you've got to obey the divine will. you got to understand that in these bodies, we are purposefully disconnected from our truth. We are purposefully disconnected and blinded to our karma, to our actual abilities, to our to our uh, previous lives. I mean, we are blinded to some very, very, very significant portions of our existence in order to live as a human being with, you know, the basic five senses. But if you lived enough lives to start to be, to, to come into the Kundalini, well, that changes things. Now, through the divine will, you are being guided into that opening and into that beauty and that amazing quality of, of oneness and completion and joy and happiness and grace that is everybody's birthright here on this world. But you've got to earn it. And once you've earned it, you have to respond to it in a way that allows it to occur to you. You can't keep fighting it with your ego. <clears throat> One of the hardest areas is the surrender part. You know, the surrender part of the divine will is a big deal. Uh, in our society, it's uh, it's forbidden, really, in very strong ways, to to give yourself to a to a flesh teacher. It's forbidden. It, you know, you're not. That's that's a big no no in our society here in the West. Uh, in the in the east, with the with the uh, on the Indus Peninsula, with the Indian culture, you know, it's a lot easier to give yourself to a guru. But how, out here in the west, oh my God, it is the worst thing you could do, because you have you know people like Jim Jones who who made people drink um, arsenic laced Kool Aid. You know, nine hundred people dead. You know, within an hour or two. Uh, not a good thing. Not a good thing. And so this has made a real dent in our collective consciousness here in the West. And and so you never, ever, ever give yourself to a man who who is claimed to be infallible, which is really not the case. But Osho, uh, Sri Bhagwan Rajneesh, uh, was such a person who was able to uh, be a focus of the giving of, of self uh, uh, for people here in the West. They took over a city in, in uh, the state of Oregon. And I think they called it Rajnishapuram. And at, at that town, <laughs> which was like Woodville or something like that before, you know, people were given permission to give themselves to the guru. And, and and they gave everything. They gave their life. They gave their money. They gave their possessions. They gave everything uh, to, 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 uh, to this man. And this man who proved fallible. 
Approved. Fallible. You know, 350 Rolls Royces. <laughs> that alone, that alone was a, to me, is a problem. <laughs> but sometimes the Kundalini will push you to give yourself to an individual. And you must give yourself to that individual. The divine flesh, so to speak. Uh, people did that for Christ. People have done that for Buddha. People have done that for Allah, uh, even when they were living. Okay, And even more so after they died. Uh, people gave themselves to these gurus and, and to these teachers, and it is okay. The main teacher, however, is the kundalini. And if she wants you to give yourself to that human, then you need to do that. Once again, this is part of divine will. Divine will. That person has something to give to you. That person has frequencies to give to you, has energy to give to you. doesn't mean that it's going to remain that way for the rest of your life, even though that is part of the instruction. To some degree, it will remain that way for the rest of the life, but not within the understandings of the egotistical mind uh, that cannot fathom or understand the imprintation of experience upon the soul of an individual. There you go. That's directly from her. Divine will takes precedence over any and all other levels of will that a person will have. Divine will is being placed into these videos. It's reaching anybody who's watching them at any time. Open yourself to the information. Open yourself to the grace that has even caused you to watch this video. Divine will has no limitations at all. None. Egotistical will does. But divine will does not. You are being opened into infinity. That's what's happening. And there are no limitations for infinity. It's only in the finite mind where we find limitation. And so from this body that was born within limitation, you know, not being able to, to know the karma or the past life, you know, these fantasies about Akashic records and whatnot, uh, there is no limitation with the Kundalini. But she takes it slow. Remember, we're in the cocoon, you know, no longer are we the caterpillar. The caterpillar has made the cocoon. The caterpillar has been guided by divine will to make that cocoon. And we're in it, or we're making it. And that possesses our mind. That possesses our instincts and our focus. And it takes us over to the point where we are in the cocoon going through the transformation, having the Kriyas, changing the diet, changing the program of the, of the culture that we're within, isolating ourselves from people as much as possible and still survive, having no friends, having no uh, intimate relationships, having no uh, real outside communication, isolation and incubation within the cocoon. This happens. This is a real good thing. But it's a real good thing that cannot be shared with normal society. Eventually, normal society will get a clue about this and, and it will be understood that, oh, oh, 
Krishna, he's isolating himself. He's got the kundalini. Well, we have to let him be. We have to let him be and let him, let him develop into that person, that, that divine person that he is becoming, that you are becoming. You, my friends, watching this right now, receiving the divine vibration, the divine frequency through this video right now into your ears, into your eyes, into your spine, into your grace. That's the whole reason I have ever done a video in my life. That's the whole reason. Since, I don't know what, 2007 or 8, something like that. Feel it. Acknowledge it. Validate it within yourself. Divine will, my friends. Thanks for watching.